Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Jones. I'm the marketing director of the AR for Enterprise Alliance, also well known as the area. I'm excited to be joined by area member Tanji Meyer of Dassault Systems and Craig Gamblin of Fairfield Control Systems. And without further ado, I'll pass this presentation off to Tanji to speak on some of the great work he's been doing. Okay, thanks a lot, Brian, and I'm um, happy to, to be here. Um, so uh, my name is Tanguy Meyer. I'm, uh, I'm part of the Delmir strategy team, and uh, I've been in the field of uh, immersive technology and especially focused on applying them on manufacturing uh, for, let's say, uh, more than 20 years now. And uh, within the, the Within Delmia, I'm in charge of uh, defining the, the positioning and strategy of our uh, um, AR, AR offer that we call Delmia Augmented uh, Augmented Experience. Uh, so, just a quick uh, quick uh, positioning with respect to who is Delmia. So Delmia is one brand of the Dassault System Group. So Dassault the Dassault System Group is is uh, as a the, as a strategy around what they call virtual twin and uh, uh, develop, is designing a platform which is called the 3D experience uh, to connect people, ideas, data and solution in a single collaborative environment for empowering the business. And um, this uh, platform has act as a single version of truth uh, for all uh, process related uh, to, um, to 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 the product and solution that you you want to develop. Delmia is the brand that is dedicated to make things happen. That is dedicated to to manufacturing. Uh, basically, powered by the free experience platform, Delmia delivers solutions to address the most challenging situation manufacturers experience today. Uh, we connect. And especially through uh, augmented reality, we connect the virtual and real world to empower our customers worldwide to collaborate, model, optimize, and execute not only manufacturing topics, but also supply chain and uh, logistics and service to achieve a strategic, a strategic business. And uh, clearly, we have, main, uh, we have our main pillars, our key pillars on, on which we focus. So, one is the workforce of the future in order to deliver a better human experience from for the for the operators and from from, uh, from all the, the the value chain of the, the manufacturing processes and uh, we also focus focus on uh, global optimization uh, to maximize the performance through the virtual what we call the virtual twin experience and the delmia augmented experience is uh, clearly an optimization of the the, the the execution, the manufacturing process execution, as I will be presenting in, in this webinar. But we, the, uh, the Delmia offer covers the overall value network orchestration. It's just not focused on one factory and one product. It's uh, connecting all the stakeholders and, and processes. And that being said, um, I will now focus on the, the challenges that we want to address, the manufacturing related challenges that we want to address uh, with the Delmia augmented experience solution and, and the, the, the things that we focus on. So uh, industry uh, is experiencing a strong transformation with uh, a very strong worldwide competition, shorter time to market and uh, more and more demanding customer experiences. And uh, this transformation uh, directly um, generate challenges for uh, for many uh, manufacturing aspects such as the product complexity that is uh, increasing with the, the 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 demand for personalization that without sacrifice sacrificing uh, quality obviously uh, there there is some with this uh, product complexity there is some impact on the manufacturing process flexibility uh, but this these processes that shall evolve and, and be more more flexible uh, have to uh, to, to keep being uh, very efficient. So the performances, the, the production and manufacturing performances are, are still uh, key and strategic. And um, the, the, we also consider that the product complexity uh, just uh, enhance the requirements for traceability uh, in order to uh, understand which product has been designed where, by whom, in order to be able to uh, to 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 have the proper uh, corrective actions in case it's needed. But there are also some some uh, some impact on the supply chain. Uh, the production now becomes worldwide uh, with an extended supply chain, more and more uh, part suppliers, and 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 you have to. Uh, 
receive all the components of those players. So uh, how do you ensure that the, 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 the quality uh, of the element of the part that you receive are aligned with your, your expectation and with your requirements? And uh, that taking into account uh, the, the, the complexity and flexibility that is linked with the regional, regional rules and regulations. And obviously, uh, there, is, uh, there is a workforce challenge uh, for, for the manufacturing. Uh, there is an ongoing talent shortage. Uh, their their uh, old old manufacturing uh, site will uh, will uh, will be able to 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 talk about that. But this is really something that that needs to be addressed in the the most efficient way. You you need to to increase the the, the employee retention and avoid avoid strong turnover. And once again, that means that you have to uh, ensure that the, the knowledge is kept. Uh, within the within the, the industry, and that you are able to uh, very quickly and efficiently enable and train uh, your teams. So all those uh, challenges uh, can be uh, partially addressed uh, through uh, the use of augmented reality, and uh, and this is uh, something that I will try to explain on how it has been done at some of our customers and how they did it and what were the the, the key uh, success conditions that we 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 discover and how we we can uh, help you by providing some methodology and, and guidelines on how to successfully implement uh, AR on the manufacturing shop floor. So uh, in order to try to, uh, with the objective to be synthetic, we, uh, we categorize most of the manufacturing use cases within two types. So the first type is something that is that start now to be quite well known with device like the HoloLens or the, this kind of uh, equipment. Uh, it's uh, assembly assistance, how to uh, efficiently support assembly operation, complex assembly operation using AR. So uh, by guiding the operator with digital work instructions, uh, providing him the, with the right information at the right time at the right place, uh, with the goal to achieve first time right and to uh, really prevent uh, any errors and especially early in the process. And um, this AR in that context will uh, support optimization of the assembly time and the productivity rate. And um, that's, that will also uh, facil facilitate operational follow-up. Here we, we can talk about traceability, being able to uh, through the digitalization of the process and the use of AR to, to document and capture a lot of information from uh, process execution. So those are, let's say, the main benefits when, when applying augmented reality to assembly assistance. And then when it comes to uh, quality control, uh, there are also huge potential benefits of apply, applying AR for quality control. So first of all, uh, you will uh, increase the reliability of non-conformance detection, meaning that you will uh, better guide the operator uh, in order to ensure that the quality controller will look at the right things at the right time uh, at, at the, um, with the right indication to guide him to focus on, on, on the right element. And it, it, will be, it will be possible to providing with, um, with a, a strong procedure and, and, and guidance for uh, following the control points and ensure ex exhaustiveness and repeatability of inspection. And that will lead to an optimized control time, uh, ensure a strong documentation and traceability with uh, repeatability and exhaustiveness of the, of, the, of the inspection. And that can be applied to manual or even robotics-based inspection. So those those two type of use cases you can you can have them all along the value chain of the manufacturing process or for all for almost any manufacturing cells you you may be able to to use AR uh, being for assembly or quality control so if you start analyzing all your manufacturing process I'm sure that you will identify many many uh, many potential application of AR, uh, which would uh, make a lot of sense uh, to improve your processes. So from assembly assistance uh, through uh, HoloLens-based approach or through uh, projective-based approach, you, you will get some benefits. And also your quality control processes uh, will, will be enhanced and improved uh, using augmented reality. But for example, you, sometimes something that can be overlooked is how can I use augmented reality to inspect incoming uh, 
uh, supplier, group, uh, supplier goods, so uh, subsystem, uh, elementary part that are produced elsewhere, uh, or as well as toolings uh, like jigs and features in the automotive industry. Um, aug augmented reality can really help you to, uh, to improve your processes, your reception processes uh, with respect to those elements. And uh, this is something where there is a, a huge potential value. Uh, you have also paint shop operations uh, where uh, you will be able to efficiently guide the operator on preparing the, 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 the elements uh, before painting or applying some specific, uh, specific materials. I won't get into the, the details of all those use cases, but there is a huge variety of use cases. And, and so, the, the first case, question that might arise when you start analyzing uh, your manufacturing processes and where you would be able to apply uh, augmented reality uh, to, to improve and uh, enhance those, uh, those processes is um, yeah, how, how to select the most relevant use cases. And, and very often you will have to, to analyze it from a, how complex would it be to implement augmented reality on these use cases? And what is the potential ROI? And, and clearly selecting the most relevant use cases means that uh, you are able to very early estimate, uh, very early estimate the, the ROI, the potential ROI of, uh, of, uh, of the use cases. And, and for that, if you're brand new to, to uh, AR for manufacturing, it, it might not be that simple, so you you might be able to find some some uh, some efficient tools um, to to support you. So uh, it was mentioned by Brian, but the area has a ROI calculator tool that can help you to. Uh, to quickly assess some, some potential benefits. Uh, for example, the second image behind here is, uh, is an extract from a white, uh, white paper from, uh, from Safran, uh, Safran Learning System especially. Uh, they, have, uh, they have deployed uh, augmented reality on their shop floor. And clearly, uh, one of the first things that they, they consider was, uh, was critical is to be able to uh, design their own ROE uh, tools and evaluation. And, and they have been working strongly on that and they have deployed their own ROE, uh, ROE cal calculator, ROI calculator, sorry. And, and, and they, they continuously feed these ROI calculators with the new project that they are implementing and that they are deploying on, on the shop floor. So really ROE is, is key and, and you can get tools to, to do it or you can also rely on some input that we can provide or some other uh, so solution provider can provide uh, where uh, which are representing actual figures of the, the, the our customers that have implemented AR on the shop floor. And you can have some ideas about where to look for ROI. So ROI in terms of productivity, how to optimize the cycle time and uh, have a faster skill ramp up, um, how to reduce uh, the cost of uh, the cost endured uh, by the, the incurred, sorry, incurred by the by the delays uh, that can come from errors made on the on, on the assembly process, for example. Um, there is also a huge uh, ROI source, which is quality, uh, doing right for the first time, uh, considering the cost of. Uh, let's say uh, wrongly uh, wrongly applying a process and uh, scrapping a, a set of uh, initial product is is very high. Obviously, being able to reach right for the first time is a huge source of ROI. Um, and once again, uh, the reduction of cost incurred uh, by non-conformity and especially the non-conformities that you will uh, export down the, the the assembly process or down the manufacturing process is um, is uh, is also a huge uh, potential source of ROI. Traceability is quite sometimes overlooked, but this really uh, provides huge value. This is especially line in, in line in our case with the virtual uh, twin vis uh, vision of Dassault system. But uh, being able to uh, have a strong visibility. Uh, into product and processes about what has been produced, what is the status, uh, what has been documented on, on defect is, is really uh, something key. Uh, and once again, it will reduce the cost um, incurred by, uh, let's say, un, in that case, uninformed decision making. You will get a strong traceability, so a lot of data of information that you can use to, to, get, to drive your, your decision making. And obviously, interoperability is also a huge source of ROI. Um, 
digitalization and uh, digital continuity with the integration with the, 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 the IT system is, is, is clearly key. And um, one thing that we consider that is very important is that the fact that augmented reality is not just bringing digital information on the shop floor. Thanks to uh, the tangible and interactive link that you create between the real world and the virtual world, uh, then you, you also create a, a, a a feedback loop for a feedback loop for the digital continuity, where you will be able able to bring back field data uh, connect, correlated to the to the DMU back to the engineering office, and this is this is something that is really uh, key in terms of uh, ROI. Just another things to consider is there is no unique hardware solution when implementing um, AR on the manufacturing shop floor. Uh, there is keep your mind your mind open, and there are many ways to to to, to work here, to, to use AR. So from tablet base to projective system to obviously uh, smart glasses, uh, but also uh, using uh, industrial camera and let's say desktop based uh, workstation. And, and I think that uh, one nice example will be provided by Craig uh, regarding what has been achieved at, uh, at BAE, at BAE uh, on, on this topic. And you can have multiple types of setup within one factory there, there is it's it just needs to check the, the you just need to build and identify what is the best for the for the for the for the work station that you, you want to 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 transform also something that we have found and that we have implemented for example with customer at safran but we are most of the time implementing this process and the, this approach uh, with uh, with uh, most of our customer and that is the to to uh, to really have a step by step approach and we consider two main steps that is the first step that we call the the pilot where do you try to 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 define and commit to the value that you want to to achieve and uh during this phase you will uh, consolidate the multidisciplinary team, find the, the right person that will drive the, the right change uh, within the co your company. Uh, there is a clear focus to have on, uh, on a digital, uh, digital continuity and ensuring the digital continuity is really something critical. Uh, and once again, not only the downwards uh, digital continuity, bringing digital information on the shop floor, but also making the best use of all the data uh, all the field data that you will collect uh, and connect to the DMU thanks to uh, the use of AR. And so uh, that is that is something that you will uh, we recommend to, to look deeply into uh, during pilot phase and not just focus on the technology uh, during the pilot phase to anticipate uh, the, 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 the challenges. You will also during the, the, the pilot uh, resolve the, the remaining uh, the remaining challenges that could be uh, some specific surfaces that are not compatible not compatible with the tracking technology that you want to use uh, the ergonomics challenges and or even the user acceptance on, on the workshop and that is the role of the pilot to to help you uh, advance those topics and the pilot is also uh, really uh, critical for refining the ROI calculation. So you might have started uh, to, to work on these use cases based on uh, an estimation of, of ROI and uh, the pilot shall help you uh, to refine this ROI calculation in order to, uh, really, uh, to really confirm and commit on the, on the, on the, the value that you want to, to, to provide uh, to, you, to your customers. And, uh, once this pilot phase is, is done, then you you can move towards deployment where you really deliver the value on the shop floor. And, and that's very often you will have one uh, work cell that will be transformed using the pilot. And the deployment means uh, deploying those the technology on multiple work cells. And during the deployment, you will obviously monitor the KPI and especially the ROI and, and the, the, the performance improvement that you, you, you will, uh, you will, uh, you, you, you will uh, see. And uh, it will allow you also to fine tune some processes because uh, not, uh, not every worker works the same way. Uh, and the deployment is also the opportunity to replicate. So, and 
once again, if we talk about, for example, uh, Safran, uh, Sa Safran Learning System, for example, they started uh, one use case in one factory and then quickly replic replicated it in the other factory once they had demonstrated, uh, they had finalized the, 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 the pilot phase and demonstrated the value in one factory, then it was a replication in the other factory. And this is clearly something that, that has uh, to be, um, that is one of the objectives of the deployment phase. And then once you have one, uh, the successful deployment, then you can work back on, um, you can come back, or for example, on your, the way you compute, you calculate the ROI and then uh, improve this the, this way and, and, and then start on expanding uh, the use cases by maybe uh, starting to address the ones that are a little bit more complex to set up. And depending on the use cases, uh, for example, once again, if we talk about Safran, uh, there were some, some very simple use cases like uh, guiding uh, a controller to inspect uh, land, landing gear. It's, it, it can be uh, quite simple. I mean, it's, it's, an, uh, it's easy to, uh, to implement AR for this kind of solution. So the pilot phase might be reduced, uh, might be reduced in terms of uh, validation of the implementation of the technology and also uh, addressing the, the, the challenges. But uh, once you have successfully implemented one uh, use case, you can start expanding the use case by addressing some other use cases and also increase the, the complexity of the use case that you want to challenge, uh, that you want to implement. Because you would have, let's say, convinced the, the, the convinced the, the all the management as well as the operators that there is some value in executing uh, that. So this is, um, I, it's a kind of stating the obvious here, but still it's something important to, to keep in mind in order to, uh, let's say, uh, keep uh, realistic and step-by-step, uh, step-by-step um, step approach uh, for uh, successfully implementing the, the, the various cases. This is the same for when it comes to quality control. And uh, so here we have our uh, use cases. So uh, the one that I was mentioning, so uh, inspecting a, a landing gear and uh, defining, uh, de defining uh, the, the, the landing gear inspection process uh, can be done quite efficiently and, and, and easily. And uh, you can do it manually. You can have a conformity check that is fully manual, and it will allow you in this. It will allow you, allow you in this first step to address the digital continuity challenges, the localization challenges, to ensure that the system that you've selected is the right one for for supporting the implementation. And then, once you have done that, then you can maybe start thinking about automation. How can I uh, move towards uh, some uh, uh, AR guided operation that are supported by automated inspection algorithm. And if you have started with step one, then step two is mostly focusing on addressing the control automation algorithm, algorithm challenges. And that, that would mean that you have solved many issues in the first step, then the second step is really focused and the efforts are focused on solving uh, the, 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 the the, the challenges that are really around control automation algorithm, like for example, automated automated detection of of the presence absence of the of the supporting element on an aero structure panel, and uh, so that is that is something that that makes uh, a lot of sense. Then uh, you can even get one step further with the full process automation using robots, and uh, in in that context, if it comes after. Uh, the, the step one and step two, then you will focus on addressing the process automation and robotic cell challenges. So in that context, once again, the idea is to really uh, take uh, the right approach by uh, focusing on uh, on solving uh, the, 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 the problem one after, uh, ch problem and challenges one, one after the other in order in the end to be able to address a very complex uh, complex use cases. One key element also is, is to, to build the right team uh, with a mix of uh, business uh, expertise and IT knowledge. Because as, as, uh, as I've been trying to explain in the, in the previous slide, uh, you have multiple challenges to properly implement uh, to, to properly implement augmented reality on, on the shop floor. And, and uh, being able to, to do so required various knowledge and, and if you miss the IT knowledge, then you will you will you will probably face huge challenges in 
replications and also uh, in digital continuity. Uh, if you are, don't have technology uh, expertise, you might not be able to choose uh, the, 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 the right tool and, and then uh, maybe uh, um, lose, lose a lot of time on, um, on, uh, on implementing a solution that is not the, 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 the ideal one. And, and we, we, we had a successful um, structuration of, of this kind of team. For example, once again, I'm talking a lot about Safran today, but uh, at uh, Safran Learning System, uh, where they built uh, what they call the Argo team, so augmented reality for ground operation. They started from uh, maintenance operation and then moved to, to, to manufacturing. And uh, this uh, Argo team has has been uh, the, the perfect mix of, of expertise that uh, that supported the deployment of multiple use cases uh, on the on, on their factories, so such as inspection processes, but uh, but also uh, complex assembly operation guidance, as well as uh, paint masking uh, paint masking operation. And uh, now within the group. Uh, Safran, uh, within the overall Safran group, uh, you have the Safran uh, Engineering Services uh, group that has a dedicated team, dedicated tool, tool uh, team, sorry, a dedicated team uh, dedicated, uh, to the roll for, for supporting the rollout of augmented and virtual reality. So what do they do? They, they try to replicate the use case that have been done by some entities of Safran. So being Safran Nacelle, being Safran Learning System, being Safran Aircraft Engine. And they are, they are really uh, meant to support uh, the, 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 the replication and the, as well as the development of new use cases. And we are, uh, they, they have a mix of uh, uh, technology expert as well as business expert and uh, obviously in-depth IT knowledge and they are strongly working with us and with the uh, the uh, the end users uh, within Safran uh, to uh, to further deploy and support the implementation of augmented reality uh, within uh, within the within the group and this this mix of of uh, of expertise is um, is quite uh, is something that you have to pay attention from the start uh, in order to to not be let's say wrongly driven uh, by only one idea and uh, and we uh, at all the, the the main customer where we have been successful in in reaching uh, let's say large deployment um, we have had to to we, we, we successfully built this kind of team. And, uh, and this is the case uh, at BAE. And I will, that being said, I will hand over to, uh, to Craig, uh, who will, uh, who will uh, introduce you uh, the, the, the work uh, we, are, we have done, uh, the, the work that Fairfield has done uh, at, at BAE. Craig? Thank you, um, yeah, so I'll quickly go through um, a bit about Fairfield control systems over the years, and then we'll discuss the implementation of what we've done at BE systems to help them achieve their goals with um, Delmia. Um, so I'm Craig Gammon. I'm the industrial IoT business lead here at Fairfield Control Systems. Um, so I've been working here for a while now, uh, basically looking at industrial complexes and how we can innovate um, at IoT um, future technologies to the factory floor plate. So a bit about Fairfields. Fairfields established in 1987 um, in control panel systems, all about fitting them to electrical systems and so forth. Really, we've got a few offices now. We've ever growing. Um, we've deployed across the country and we continue to grow. Um, we are quite high in employing apprentices. We do enjoy the fact that we can probably say that 50% of our staff were apprentices at one point in our company and have gone through the ranks and understood everything and grown with the company with us. And um, what this allows us to do is actually have a, a young workforce is quite nice. They're used to the newer technologies that we're here talking about um, today with Dalmia and how they could quickly adapt to them and understand them. Um, so, yes. In-house, we have a lot of expertise and hopefully this background will help you understand why we we're chosen by various companies to work with them. Um, we have a lot of software developers to help develop the front ends and back end systems. Um, we have network engineers that are trained and certified in higher degree um, and cybersecurity and other standards. Um, and then also along that, we have a lot of safety engineers and automation engineers. And a few there, you can see through there what we can offer as our services and why we were kind of, with this wide range of skill sets that we can offer, you can see how we kind of start to fit in into the IoT industrial network sort of environment and domain and allow YBAE systems kind of, we're quite happy to work with us collaboratively. 
So I thought I'd give you a bit of background about our project history since our inception, and you can understand why we've kind of been brought into this. Now, a lot of our projects are very bespoke, and this is where we kind of excel as a company. Um, you can see right back in 1987, we're working with Channel 10 and Boring Machine, all the way up to the BAE work we've got at the minute. But you've got a few big things there, like Tower Bridge, uh, Falkirk, Wheel, and the Dubai Eye, which was a massive um, project. And all of these very bespoke and unique niche projects that we kind of excel on as a company. Um, we're quickly able to work with the customer and collaboratively develop their, their solution and build it for them. And this is kind of where Fairfields enjoys the, the, the work they have here. Uh, and with quick background is a few names that you might pick up on. Obviously, BA Systems is the key one we're going to be talking about today, but these are our clients and industries over there. There's a few big um, brands that you might notice. Now, what do we do in solutions in IoT? And in fact, is the future. You can see we do quite a bit there. We do system integration, so that involves us kind of coming in and understanding the workshop, what the floor, the MES system they're using and working with that to integrate other technologies and so forth. Uh, automation, so sitting there with either cobots, robots, or other thing, elements of the system and getting going forward and pushing that, uh, deploying that into the factories. Uh, functional safety. Uh, the standard what you expect all the safety requirements putting in there and that's where our certification and engineers help excel um, IT solutions what we're going to talk about today in regards to the Delmia software and so forth uh, networks cybersecurity, and then extended reality is all the other elements we offer as well um, so we're going to start touching on what we do here is a technology integration and this is key kind of how BE got us brought it into this project and how we met Delmia uh, Diota at the time um, but what our big thing is that we come in and we start to understand all the different um, kind of ideas that BAE wanted to bring together in their factory. And our big thing was integrating them all to allow for one single point of interface and standardize it to make a simple interface for the users or operators to work on. And a key part of that is kind of building those integrations and understanding um, what the learning curves there will be. So we're trying to reduce them with the interfaces that we've built. <clears throat> And um, going forward, we work quite heavily with a BAE and Belmere once their partnership started going with us and understanding how we can kind of reduce that learning curve um, with the products and so forth. But yes, that's our key one going forward is technology integration. And here we can start to see how we work with the, uh, the MES um, system. Again, along the bottom, you can see that's one of our workstations, has a lot of information and technology there. Um, Makes reality is a big one we'll be talking about today, but along with that, we also talk about um, smart tools and digital work instructions that are getting passed down from the, the broker, um, which we deploy, build, and it's a bespoke solution. Um, from that, we take from the MES, as you can see along the top there in the animation, different aspects of the operation, so billing material, work instructions, tooling, and so forth there. We bring and digest that information and able to disseminate that across the relevant tools and systems that require it on the factory floor. Um, what this allows us to do is kind of have a, an agile system in a way that we can quickly um, adapt to uh, the requirements of the customer and push out different information. If they add new features in, new tools, uh, new headsets, maybe for VR, um, it allows us to have that one central point within the broker to configure and collaborate and control those um, tools and equipment. So starting off where we start with BA Systems, our journey, um, BA Systems worked with the AMRC um, to design a proof of concept, um, which you can see there in that picture of a intelligent workstation. Um, you can see they've got a cobot in the middle and a few other bits and bobs there, like a kit by lights there, so you can pick information out and some jigs and so forth. Uh, now, the, the big thing was that they designed the concept and that the prototype concept, and they, they wanted to push it further, and we got contacted by BAE to turn that into a production um, system. And from that kind of concept, we went over to AMC, looked at it, investigated and realized if we wanted to get to the next level to get in the factory floor paper, there's a bit of work to do. Uh, one of those things was bringing in a AR sort of aspect to it. And this is what we came up with, with BA systems. Um, when you, what you can start to see there is a more industrialized unit that you would, would expect to find in the factory. Um, you've got fixed jigs there to kind of hold pieces in place. And you can start to see there on the top of the canopies, the gantries, the optical projector systems. And this kind of leans back to what Tanji says is kind of, you can use anything to kind of integrate into the system and project the AR, the AR sort of thing aspect into it. Um, and part of this problem 
work set, sorry, was workbench, we ran into a, a little problem really. The fact is um, we had to have the gantries at a fixed height for the solution we were using for our um, AR. And that, that caused a bit of issue with BEE because um, it, it made it harder to kind of get involved and hands on because of the fact that they always had the canopy in the way. Um, blocking the user from being able to operate on it correctly. It also required the parts there to be fixed in place. You couldn't be able to adapt and quickly move the parts for the operator to work around. As we know, when working things, you kind of want to spin it around to get your tool in a different angle and so forth. But the, the solution that we work with BE there it didn't work for this requirement going forward. Um, so that required ourselves and BEA to go out to the market and kind of investigate what options there were out there. And one of them we came over was Diota. Um, at the time, now it's called Delmia because it's been acquired, but we didn't bump into Diota and started investigating their solution. And from our talks and further investigation of BE, we realized it's the way forward to go. And from these conversations we've had with Diota, we were able to build these bigger intelligent workstations. Now they're called workbenches. You can see they're quite impressive there. Um, that allowed us to move the canopies right up out of the way. And um, the projectors would then be able to project down and snap on uh, to the parts. And this is one of the great pieces of functionality that Delmere offers. And now we're seeing as a, a very nice to see really in the, the environment we're working on. Is that the, we can then have one workbench under each canopy and the projector will project down, snap onto the part, and we can move it up and down, side to side and so forth. But what we can do is actually um, combine the workbenches together and create one big workbench between the two areas and project down on both sides of it. And we can allow us to work on bigger parts. For example, uh, wiring looms is always a good example because that's a long bit you can crack on with and basically put it across both workbenches and help you. As Panji talked about earlier, whether it's inspection of quality or actually building the parts, it kind of allows you that environment to really have to work in that area without any information, uh, without any problems of blocking the information really come to it snapping. Um, with these canopies we've brought in, thanks to Dyrus's technology, we can actually even move the benches out. Those benches that you can see in the pictures are actually mobile, so you can potentially move them away, rolling a bigger piece of aircraft equipment underneath it and project down on that as well. And again, quickly, uh, the Dyrus system, Delmia software now, is able to uh, adapt and quickly snap and allow the operator to move around and spin. It's quite impressive to see when you see it in the factory role play, you spin it around and easily work easy in that environment. Now, this has massively helped our clients improve their quality control or inspections, um, building and assembling kits. It's, it's quite brilliant to see what the software that Diot is providing here. And working collaboratively with B Systems and Delmia now, we've been able to constantly have a feedback loop of actually we can do this better and do that better. And we can, it's great collaboration that we've developed here. Now we're bringing the technology onto the next steps. Um, one of the features that Delmere offer is an app factory. And there's been a few times where it allows us to develop our own bespoke apps for clients. Um, one of them may be the fact that, as I alluded to, we do a lot of technology integrations, is allowing a single interface um, to work with it. So when we click start on our project, our workflow, um, it is able to power on the projectors, automatically start up the Delmere software and load up the correct project files. And so we're automating it all the way through passing it through. And then, then it starts projecting straight away without having to um, kind of interact with the Delmia software, doing another startup project. It's taking that constant loop of pressing different things around. So we're able to provide it in one interface. Uh, and that's the same with the, um, the smart glasses. We use HoloLens in a lot of our systems environments. And it instantly, they can click start on the tablet that they were doing it in operation. By the time they click the HoloLens up to put on the Delmia aspect, it's already loaded up the software, the project and they are able to walk around quite easily and it snaps on quite quickly onto the, uh, the object they'll be working on. Um, now this solution, constantly evolving, this brilliant sort of thing we're provided here for BE systems, and we're constantly pushing forward to it. And Delmia's support back is always great because we're constantly getting a feedback loop. Um, but we'll go on to the next bit. So as part of this, I kind of touched on in those previous slides is we kind of built a whole orchestra project within BA systems and part of that orchestra project, obviously the Delmia VR aspect. Um, behind this, we built um, integrations into 13 different technologies, one of them being the Delmia he headsets, the Delmia kind of projection units. Um, with that, we developed over 1 million lines of code to help develop, develop that factory of the future solution that they were after, allowing us to 
have a one single point interface to interact with all these different technologies. Um, it's been a quite an interesting project, um, challenging at times because there's no easy answer. Sometimes you do have to go out the way and try and work out how things come together and integrate them correctly. But I would say the Delmia um, aspect to the side of the project, the AR is, is brilliant. Um, the fact that when you bring it into a factory environment and see how it improves the, the quality, the, the cost cutting me measures and so forth, it's, it's brilliant how it excels in those sort of environments. So again, I'm going to talk about collaboration here and the benefits. So because we are now built this partnership with Delmia and Dassault and then BE Systems, we are able to work quite collaboratively quite well. Um, we can deepen our technology evaluation within that. We can take parts out and understand how to progress them further. Um, we are able to kind of transfer knowledge from different sectors to help our customers in BAE um, to pro provide that next level of information they require. And we, we act like an extension of the client's team. Um, and the fact that so does Delmia. Um, but it's great for them to do it. Um, the knowledge transfer from the other sectors also benefit with all. All right, great stuff. Uh, thank you to our speakers uh, today. Uh, with that, I think we're gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna say thank you to the audience as well. I hope to see you again soon. Uh, it was a great talk. Thank you, Panji and Craig. Um, and thank you to the audience again. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brian. Bye. Bye.